Hello, my gente. It's your girl Tori. Indeed, I'm vibe to vibe. Today's special guest is Igal Ozeri, international hyperrealism artist living in New York City who has exhibited solo in Spain, China, France, Germany, Mexico, and many, many other places. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Yes, yes. Here's... I just, I just finished uh, a big show that was uh, in uh, Flint in Detroit, in Michigan. It was wow. a retrospective show of 65 work that came from a 3D big collection, one from Wayne Yeks from uh, Colorado, one from Eileen Kaminsky from New, New York, and one from Lou and Susan Meisel, and part of my collection, my private collection. And this was, this was in the Flint. It's a very good museum, one of the five wow. or six big museum in the state. And uh, the curator Stacy done amazing job there and uh, show it for five months. And uh, this show will travel after that to many other museums in the next year. And uh, uh, it's going to be a big show about photorealism that Louise uh, donate all his collection. Louise and Susan Maisel, believe it or not, in the Smithsonian in Washington, that this will happen in 2023. This could oh, be wow. a major, major show. They're building a, a, a major pavilion for photorealism. And I think it's a, it's a big thing in American art because they've done the biggest pavilion about pop art, about uh, abstract painting with Rotko and all the American abstract. And now they're doing with the photorealism. That photorealism for many, many years, it was in the shadow of the pop art. And right now right. they're putting a stamp and, and building a, a, a whole wings of uh, photorealism and it's all come from the collection and i'm very proud that i'm in that show i'm the only artist from the third generation it starts from richard estes for chuck lost from bechtel from uh, larry bell from a lot of different artists and then uh, future myself and then this show will travel in 15 different museums that the smithsonian would choose around the world so this is a big achievement and it's all happened because of Louis and Susan for he's eight years old and now he decided to donate his collection. And I'm very, very proud to be in that show. Show is titled The 50 Years of Hyper Realistic Painting. Yes. I am familiar with Louis K. Meisel. I had the opportunity to speak with him. He he yes. definitely invented the terminology and for you to be part of history. That's him awesome. him and he, he invented it together with Ivan Karp. Ivan Karp was a, a, a gallerist that was the director right. of Leo Castelli in the 70s. And him and Louis, Louis Moore, he would push the photorealism and the hyperrealism, but also Ivan Karp. This was the two people that Ivan Karp died. But Louis, for many, many years, I have to say a couple of words, many, many other galleries was more interesting how to make money. But he's the only artist that invented a style in art and push that and support this artist and he done around 365 shows around the world from japan china poland all europe in all america shows about photorealism and now uh, in his in his life he's getting such a respect from the from the smithsonian because the smithsonian is the basically the most influenced museum about history about the american art and they are doing all the they writing the history basically and right. they are they are giving now to him the opportunity to to uh, bring all his experiment and all what he done all of his years thank yeah. you so much and i know you're very passionate to educate to teach yeah I it's important for, for me because artists besides that they are good artists or they are uh, uh, sell art, or they are showing art, they need to educate the people because people need to be, get help from artists. Artists as the anchor of the society and they need to, sh to, understand, to give from their knowledge to people and to educate people, educate collectors, educate young students, educate young artists. I think it's important.
Thank you so much. And last but not least, because this is part of your introduction, but it's so much to say because of all your accomplishments, your experience, and- Yeah, I'm 63 years old, I'm getting old. I know I have a lot of experience. <laughs> Suddenly I realize that I have so much to, to, to share with people and we can, you cannot sometime in one interview get everything. I but I'm very proud. I work very, very hard all my life and uh, still working very hard. And I'm, I'm very happy to look back and to see all the, the shows that I've done and the museum that I included. And a lot, I could say, we have to thank Louis and many collectors of mine that donate work to many museums around the world. And uh, because museum is always got sponsored by collector or sponsored by people that support art. And um, it's important to be when you live life and suddenly you are in different museum, the art stay after you die and the art basically reflect what's happened in that period of time. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to say that I'm in many museums, like you mentioned, and many more. I know. know. I was I wanted to give you a grand introduction and it's just like okay so how 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 far do I go <laughs> So you know Yes it's okay it's okay that we can do that by part it will be easy on the audience Yes yes <laughs> uh, let's begin yes. with your roots and I know you shared a story in a previous interview when you were 5 years old that you went home crying and your father was trying to figure out like why are you crying and yes, it turns yes. out that you got in trouble because you weren't listening to the art teacher. And instead yes. of doing the project, you basically created your own piece of art, drawing circles. And she yes, actually yes. It's you a, in the hand. It's, a, it's a more than that. I think my father was a wise man and uh, he was very, very powerful. And uh, he was a musician, he played accordion. His oh, wow. Brother, this is the only one. He, his brother was a painting in the side. He was also a musician. We, we check like seven generations back. We didn't have anybody that was dealing with art, you know. But this is the only way that I could say it would reflect for me. But I had, I had a, also a neighbor that I remember that every Saturday when I was little kids, he was calling me uh, to, draw. <laughs> uh, to invite me to invite me to come to his home and he will make for me breakfast and he will copy oh, nice. he was a painter he was copy from my uh, art books a lot of different things and i was sitting near him and i was so excited and i was waiting for that every saturday i goes and i was working that's what my father told me and the story for the for the kindergarten what you said in the beginning it's a very interesting story because I came home and I, I was I was crying and my father didn't understand why I came and I walk from the kindergarten to home by myself. Oh my god. And gosh. he was very worried and he took me back to the to the to the school and he asked what's happened and, and my the 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 the, the 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 woman there said, you know what, he, every time that there's an art uh, lesson, he doesn't listen. He just doing a black circle, a black sun, it's called a black sun. I draw and I draw and I draw and I draw the same thing. She asked to do that and I do the same things. And my father said, but why you hit him in your in his finger? Yes. This is not supposed to be. But in that time in Israel, every teacher used to do that. It was also all over Europe and in different places. Right. It was a strange time. He's not allowed to do that today to oh, hit no. kids, but, but my father fight and fight and went to psychology and showed the painting. Yes, the sign of being and, an artist. <laughs> yes, and then the, the psychology said, listen, she doesn't understand anything. This is the beginning of an artist because artists, they all do, they all do again and again the same things. And this idea, it's, it's obviously an artist. And, and she did understand that. And this is what's happened. Uh, we are in a society where we have a lot of mediocre people that teaching in, in the all different places. And my father fight and fight. And in the end, he was able to uh, to throw it out for the job because he's not able to hit 
students and it changed the law in Israel because it was a very special case that came to the court and uh, that was my father. Wow, he made a difference. And he made a difference and he <laughs> kept the, we have this drawing until, to, until today. It's so funny to, to say that story I said that in Israel when I become a well-known artist there and then they were, everybody was laughing. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I love, love, love that story. And your yeah, experience yeah. is you sometimes they don't realize when children, they can't sit still. They're dancers, they're artists, they're directors, they're yeah. creators. And it's just that they have a different spark. <laughs> yes, um, yes, exactly. Who also mentioned painting on Saturdays, eating breakfast. That's a great friend, by the way. <laughs> yes, so. yes. This I took. I took. This is my father. He used to take me. He had a very funny car. It was called Susita in Israel. It's a car that even the it's came. It's a car. It was very poor. It's a car that was built from a cardboard, like the camel was eating this car. <laughs> so <laughs> and he, and he was take me all the time with his car. To, to go to Jaffa and to Jerusalem. And uh, and I remember that he was sitting near me. He didn't understand why it's happening, but he realized that he has to do it at something. So he took me every time and I was doing watercolor and drawing in Jerusalem in the old cities. And uh, when I was 12 years old or 14 years old, he organized for me the first show in uh, Bet Rotter in Hulon, it's a small city where we live, and it was a center right. for children and, and families. And he was so proud, and he <laughs> used to frame the old work and show to all his friends. And and he done a first show. I, I will never forget it to my father. It was amazing, and he used to sit and bring me food and give me to eat. And I was like 10 years old, sitting and doing a drawing from life. That mm -hmm. was my first in, in, in interaction with real reality of art or real wow. painting from the nature. So this I will never forget to my father. He gives so much love. Right. Even he didn't understand what is what about art and what to do with that, you know? Yes, that's amazing. And it's very yeah. rare for that time frame. I'm very, I'm very thankful to him that he pushed that. He realized that I'm talent and he saw that. And, and, uh, and uh, he tried he didn't try to push me to go to do other stuff. He just said, you should be a painter. Do that. Do that. And he was like so supporting of that. That's and very rare. It's very rare. Exactly. Right. So during those times, if you didn't have those starting points, do you think you would have found art anyway? I think, I think, I think, uh, I think people born with that. I always say that. I think uh, people that there's a, that there's a mission, they are uh, born with that, you know? Yes. We have the, and people that they are, uh, want to be an artist, you know that from early age, you know? I, I think people in any, any field, you know, I, I, I have a son that is a soccer player. And he started when he was five years old, and we almost knew that he was a he will be a soccer player. Of course, it was the help of me and my wife and all the family and everything. It's always the help of the support of the environment around you. But in the end, the talent you're born with that. I always say that. And if you wanted it, in the end, it's 10% is talent. But it's all all the rest is the the how you divide to do that and how your passion to do that. Right. And I'm lucky to say that I had that and I always remember myself paint. I always remember me drawing the lessons all the time with pencil, all the time with pens, all the time do things with paper. And uh, that's, that's, that's what's happened. You know, that's what's happened. We have, we have a sentence we have a sentence in the Bible in, in a Jewish way, and I always say that. And this is, I said, this is my sentence in life that I always said. It's called, it's called, in Hebrew I could say that, it's, and then I'll translate to English. It's, it's, it could say, it's mean, 
Everything is predicted to you when you're born, but you have, and this is only in the Jewish way, not in a Christian way, in the Jewish way, and you have the right to change it. You have the right to ask the question and to change it. You only want the God will give you, you know, in a Christian world, the Christianity said, we never ask any question about what God give us. God give us that. And that's what we do. And, and, but I'll give you an example. When okay. Picasso born, when Picasso born, he was eight years old and his father was painting a pigeon and he left for 20 minutes, the room. And the pigeon was in the middle. His father painted the pigeon. It's difficult to paint pigeon. And Picasso was eight years old. He came and he continued the painting of his father and finished it when he was went to eat. And when his father came, he realized, he said, this kid's eight years old. Done that, I have to stop to paint because this is so much talented than me. So, but the idea is like that. Picasso born with talent and everybody knew that he would be a great artist. But in the end, he make a new idea of a style in the art. Like he, he changed the art world with his style. He, right. he, he done so many things that other people didn't do. So he invent a new idea. And this is the sentence, come back to the sentence that I said, that everything was predicted but he had the power to overpower what God say or what God give him and change it to even much more that there was predict to him. Wow. You know, so this is it. And it's happened in many, many things. It's not only in art or in, or in sport or anything. Oh, right, it's right. also people that coming and they have a disease and they said, okay, I accept that and they die. But there's people said, no, I will not accept that. I will fight and I will change it. That sentence is very, very important. I always say that to people, you have to, you have to ask the question and change and try to go further than what people predict for you. And this is what I always remember myself and now what I try and I always ask question. I always try to change, you know, Yes. and to go further. Thank you for sharing that. That is very, very nice. Nice of you for to share that with me. And I agree. I, I definitely agree with that. You have the opportunity to go for it, to change it, to, you know, to pursue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's supported exactly. with your ambition, your passion. So I think that is amazing. Yeah. So I do know you're a self-taught artist, but yes. between the ages of I'm a 18... self-taught only with the period that I came to America. In Israel, I was, I was in a school. Yes. But well, we were in a school that was never paint figurative work because abstract, right? It was more abstract, and most of my teacher was an abstract painter, and uh, a lot of them uh, they told they told us when we were called the gener the generation of reproduction. Basically, in Israel, the museum was very poor. There was not any figure or any figurative painting in the museum. It was all abstract and very limited. And right. we learn about international art through a reproduction, mostly in black and white. We, I always say that in any interview. So my teacher said, you don't have to paint a portrait. Well, that was ridiculous. You have to, you don't have to learn the basic. You can glue, you can do a collage, you can do whatever you want. Right. So, and this is what didn't happen in the beginning of my career. I was start like an abstract painter. I start like uh, dealing with all architecture idea and doing more drawing and more schematic way and more uh, uh, minimal way. And, and I had to learn that by myself. I had to go through the whole process, you know? Right. Uh, there's a lot of artists that they're self-taught. In the end, when you teach yourself, you go more further and more deeper. And in the beginning, I was copying in a lot of artists that I see in the art history, I was calling quotation about art. I was the first moment that happened to me that it changed my life is when I left Israel and I went to see the Prado and I saw the Les Maninas of Velasquez. That was oh. the biggest influence in my, in my art and it changed my life. I remember 
Is I'm <laughs> sorry. Is that the the painting you stared at for three hours? Yeah. They were gonna yes. call the police. <laughs> Yes, yes, that was that's the was that was the, that was a great moment in my life. That when I was in the Prado, I was I went to the Prado and I didn't believe because I never saw. I only named the name uh, Goya and Velasquez and El Greco in my books. I never see any right. any, any real piece of them. And I remember, and I understand in that moment why Picasso done a thirty six version of work and copy the Les Maninas, or many artists copy the Les Maninas, because I understand why when I'm standing in front of that painting for three hours, and, and really so close, and the, and the guard was asking me, why are you staring at it all the time? They were very scared. They want to call to the guardian to take me out. I told him, listen, I'm a painter, don't worry. And I have to tell him all of that stuff. Yeah. But I understand that moment, why Velasquez was beyond his time? Because when he was painting that painting, it's called painting on a prima. It's basically in the art world, is you see what that paint it's figurative, but it's painted so fast and it's painted like one one layer, and then when it before it's dry in the same day, he paints the second layer and the third layer and the fourth layer. And so wet that, paint on wet paint. Wet paint on wet paint. And that's what Velasquez brought to the world. It's always you learn when you see the process of painters and you read about them and you see that in life, so real painter could understand. And that's what Picasso understand. And it, and it kills him. He didn't understand how he done that. And in that time was a classical painting. They paint one and wait one week and paint another layer. But it didn't done like that. And that's the revolution of the Les Maninas. And, and another thing is that he put his auto-portrait, like he is a viewer, he is the painter, he is the, all the heroes in the painting is as his face inside. It's basically like his auto-portrait. It's like his thought. He, okay, he painted the, the king, the people in the kingdom and in Fanta and all the, the kings. But it basically he done what he want. It was a commission, but inside this commission, he basically tricked the king, and he done all the all the try all the try out of artists, and he changed things in the history through the painting. But the, but the king didn't understand that he will never realize that, and that's what artists <coughs> like Leonardo da Vinci and people like that do. They done in the end. He was a commission, but he was a free man. He was a free artist. He done whatever he want. Anything he, he done want. whatever he want in the painting. And he tricked everybody. But so many years after that, people realized what he done. But you also paint wet on top of wet. Exactly. That's a what a lot of people skill, in the right? photo, they said to me, Eagle, this is what I this is what I always said. There's many artists that included that. Louis represent many photorealistic that are very, very good artists. And, and one of them is that I learned a lot is Richard Estas, that yes. when you look on Estas painting, you see from close that it's almost like an abstract detached. When you go further, you see that, that it's more, it's more uh, 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 tight. And that's, that's basically what I done I, because I was trained like an abstract painter. Your the first, first layer. Mine, the all first layer of mine is very fast. I put it on the canvas very fast. It doesn't, people don't understand that. In photorealism, most of the artists do. The foreground and the far, far ground in the same, the same way. I'm not doing it like that. I do it like photography. I take the, the, the first ground, the closest, the portrait, very tight. The, the 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 background is very transparent and it's very uh, more abstract and it's more uh, 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 like haze hazy but I combine it also in the first layer when I do the the basically the portrait I do it very fast and then little by little I tighten it and the background I get it to be more abstract.
what I do in my portraiture. And what he's doing, it, what he's happened to do is like, most of the painters of the photorealism, they don't paint portraits, first of all. They paint architecture, they paint still life, they paint cars, they paint all different things, if you can look about the history of photorealism. And I'm one of the only one that paint portraiture in that way. What I do, what I do, and that's what my process is, is more that I'm not adore the photograph, I basically use the photograph and then I erase the photograph. And I explain to you how. I, I'm going to the nature, I paint the model or whatever in the nature. I take it to the computer. And this is what he said, the digital revolution of the digital things. And I start to change things that I want. So the first original that I photograph in the nature with the model, I take and this is change and this is basically do a lot of changes. Basically, I doing erasing. I erase the first original. And in the end, after I, the last one that I take out from the computer and I project on the, on the, on the, no, on the wow. wall, mm -hmm. is basically, is basically completely different original. So basically all the, the, the formula is that I, I basically erase photography. Most of the people in the 70s, the 60s, the 80s, that they are taking the photograph and basically they copy that exactly one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's my that's my what I add to photorealism. That's what I change in photorealism. And that's what I bring unique. And that's thanks God what I what I got from my background, from my my right. history, my life, from my from my original place that I come from. My, my process is basically the most important, is that the perception. The perception is, is what I'm, I'm bringing because people in the end doesn't understand what is it. It's a photograph, it's a painting, it's a clip from a video. I like, I like, and I always give that example. They asked one time Francis Bacon, why? You take and doing oil painting and then cover it with glass. And people, why why you do that? They didn't understand that. So so Francis Bacon gave very interesting answer. He said, artists has to keep a lot of secret secret to themselves. Because if they will give all the strict secret away, this is what I do. I take and paint. A lot of time he painted the, 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 the figure and then he erased the figure. And then people didn't understand why he put glass. Why they that? He doesn't let them to see so close the, 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 real, the real painting. He said, he said the answer like that. I don't want to, to, to the audience to understand everything. Some have to stay secret to the artists and the art world. That's what he said. And I agree with him. Because the same what Velasquez done, the same what Picasso done, the same like every master in the history done. You have to leave things that people will discover after you die or people discover after you go from this world. They take time. It's need time to people. If you understand everything in one shot, it's not good. And then another thing, I, I always said, you are a photorealistic, you are hyperrealistic. People need to put you in a draw. Yes, I am. But I, when I do uh, erasing photography, I'm not going into that category, in that category, category that of saying that I'm a photorealist or I'm hyperrealist artist because I'm combining a lot of other elements inside. But yes, from the history and what the Smithsonian now put and all the museum put me, in that category, I could not fight with them because that's or what Louis Maisel said, bigger people than me say that. And I'm not fighting with that. But I think by myself that I'm adding a lot of stuff that photorealistic artists doesn't, and I just mentioned that, that doesn't put inside their palette or inside their canvases. A, a lot of time people told me, you know, the early works of you was not like that and now you're photorealistic. And what's going on? A lot of people ask questions. I was very well known artist be before in Israel, and then I changed my style, and yes. I'm photo artist. I answered that. 
I said, I was for many years, to paint a portrait is the holy, to paint a portrait is the holy things in art, is the highest, highest art right. in art. I've, I've heard you mention it, that in an interview. Yeah, people don't, people don't do that when they're young, when they're young artists. It's hard to do that. Many young artists do that today. But I was afraid to do that. It took me many time until uh, I really, and I didn't train like that. It took me many, a long time to understand that and to talk right. myself. And I feel when you are 40 years old, I was allowed the first, first time to paint my daughter, my son, and yes. myself. And I felt freedom to do that. And it took me time. Some people do that earlier. But I think when you are more mature, you can... Sometimes you look for what you need to say all your life and you don't make it. But in the end, like I, many artists, they when they find their way and they find their style and they find their what they bring to the world, it stay with them. And that's what I felt when I came to America first time. We're living in a world that it's so figurative, situation between people. Right. So many uh, uh, things that are happening. And, and people is painting abstract. You know, I couldn't understand that because it's it's running away from reality. It's running away from the... from And, and art always was the reflection of life. I always believe on that. And and you have to... You have to... Art is, is making... The artists always, the good artists, they bringing some things from the life, some things from the what's happened in that century and what's happened in this society, and and uh, a lot of things. I'm in my art in in, in in the first things when I paint a woman in nature, I bring the people back to the intimacy. What I paint now, uh, when I paint a woman. So I paint all the banal woman, moment in nature when the woman is a stronger woman that go to the nature and win the nature. And when the women, you can live, you cannot live without them and you, and you cannot live with them. It's so complicated. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, women is the best thing that we have in this life because women bring the new generation. Women bring, give birth. Women is the most holy things. And I think I'm in my work, I admire women and I uh, I give them the, the main role in the society. And now I'm so happy after what's happened with Trump that there was a revolution and women got back to the, to the power that they deserve in the art, in the society, in the psychology, in, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the political situation, in everything. And, and, I I always in my early works, I always in the in the works of all the women in nature, I always put the women in the nature and the women basically win the nature. And the nature is God and the women even win win God and win the nature. This is what I this is what I do in the art. Many, many people go against me and said, you know. Oh, he paints young women. This is the old man. He paints young women and all this blah 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 blah. I <laughs> don't have any things about that. Yes, it's a gaze of a man. It's a gaze of a man that looking on a woman, but it's a gaze of admiration. It's a gaze of putting the woman up. It's a gaze of uh, putting the woman strong. And, and, and it's a, it's a, this is what they deserve and this is what our society deserves. You see, people here in America was, until today, didn't choose a woman president. In India, in Pakistan, in many places that we call them third world, there was a woman president. Right. That's the first time Biden chose a vice president. First time in America, America. Yes. In, in, in in Switzerland, until 30 years ago, women could not allow to vote. Think about the society, the most strongest country in the society. We're still far away to be a democrat country. I think until we're not going to have a, a, a president, when Hillary Clinton was supposed to be winning, and supposed to win, they give to Obama. 
they give to a black man instead of to give to a woman. That's how much our society doesn't understand how much women is important. And for me, this is the, the, the main things what, what I done in the most early works in the photorealism with women against nature. That's so in depth. And thank you so much. That's very admirable as a woman. I think even within your art, which is part of the history, capturing the moments yes. in your art. Yes, I'm doing, I'm doing now, and this is thanks to, to Sheer, my daughter. Yes. So it worked for 15 years. She's an amazing woman. And I tell you a story when she was, I have two children, one is Sheer and one is Adam. When I took Sheer, when she was a couple months on my shoulder, and every weekend I used to go to see art, I remember her eyes when she was five months or six months or one year. Looking on art, like open her eyes so strong and looking on the art when I take her to the galleries and museum and smiling and happy wow. and excited. And, and I knew that she will go to his art. You see it for an early age. That's what I said. You're born with that. And when yeah. I took Adam, he was hated it. He was <laughs> crying. And he was said, let's go home. I don't want to see that, daddy. I want to go home. And he became a soccer player. <laughs> so, so that's the difference. And she, many years after she finished the university, my wife said, you know what? I, I don't think it's a good idea you take her to work for you. I said, no, I disagree with you. I think she got to go and work with me and we will be good. And yes, in the beginning, we were fighting a dog. But then she <laughs> And she loved art and she moved me ahead for so many ways. She come from this generation. She understands things that I don't understand. She has a very good sense of what's happened today in the art world. Mm -hmm. uh, many, many people said, oh, why she pushed you to go to that direction to paint all of that. Stay with the women in nature. I don't want to say who say that, but <laughs> she, uh, push, she tell me, daddy. Don't leave that, but go around you. There's so many things. You are 30 years in New York. The surroundings. You what's happening around you. Yes. And this was a shift. And I started to done that. And thanks to her, it was amazing, amazing things that I'm doing. Many scenes from New York, many things that I do now recently, diner in the, in the time of the COVID. I love the diner um, yeah, painting. You no, know, it's, it's uh, people love that. People see that I'm basically doing things that what a lot of photorealistic artists done before and what a lot of artists from the pop are done before, they right. reflect the society like what what Andy Wall done, what Jasper Don Jasper Don Jasper Jones done with the flag, what Roy Lichtenstein done, with a lot of other artists that take some from the the, the 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 symbol in life and bring that the pop art done the symbol of coca-cola like 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 all different images from life and make make it bigger oh, like the life. polar bear in the snow. yes exactly I, I take the real the real society exactly what's happened in society and bring it and when what's happened i i done a painting in the same time when it was the black life matter and the people is in uh, lifting their hands and they have thousands of hands like that shouting. And it's a strong moment. It's almost like a painting of Bruegel that so right. many people in the street lifting their hands and they're very, in the, the hands, you see the hands, the expressive hand up and the face in the back of their body and they shouting. And that was reflect a moment that we'll never forget in that society. That was a revolution. I show it in a beacon, in a, in a show in beacon about, about the reality show of, uh, about reflection of society, the things that I always said. Do you know the, the day, every day bring with him something very yes. interesting. It's the same like like Andy Wall. I always said that you will go with a Polaroid and photograph all the time, everyday life. You go in the subway, you see things that, like example, the guy that sells the chocolate. 
the painting with all the chocolate in the subway that nobody pay attention to him come buy a gum or buy a chocolate and move everything is so fast in the subway but there are so many moments in the subway that you are you are, you are yeah like you're showing right now but that's more moment that people working in the subway people in the in the night in the scene in the night people right. in, in winds with people walking it's so many great moment the diners many moment in the in in that they are so so connect to our life the betty bomb right now that you can see that it's a lot of people in the covet when they they put their hands in the subway and they were afraid this is amazing moment that we always gonna with with that we can see and, and see in life and remember yeah and 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 this is what what here pushed me to do and I start to open my eyes and start to realize that I I don't have enough time I need to start to do fast what I feel and what I see every day and 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 it changed me it's completely changed me it's not that I'm not continue with a woman I do also a lot of the difference is that here I'm not direct what to do with the women in the nature i also didn't direct but i was brought them to the nature i choose the nature here right. i just go and i photograph she is photograph other photographer is photograph me is photograph and, and and i create what i see in life and that's the two things that i'm dealing with that right now i didn't stop to paint the woman this is what i well known with that but i add to my resume and i add to my life this right. kind of work. Well, you had quite a few transitions from abstract to hyperrealism. You went from women in nature to the beautiful surroundings. So you had quite a few transitions. And initially, yes. your the first reaction from collectors and maybe supporters, they were just like, wait, wait a minute, where are you going from abstract? You don't believe how many people, many people punish me, I tell you. I had many, Oof. many collectors well that they collect me since i'm 20 years old and then suddenly i left israel and i changed little by little they were shocked they were shocked they were <laughs> they said we bought from you so many work what are we going to do with all of this work now we we don't suddenly you change and it's real there are some collectors that stay and bought the whole different layers of my work like eileen kaminsky like wayne yeks like many many other people and then there's people that left me and they said, you know what? I'm not going to collect this. We don't like that. Or we hate that. I Ooh. had so many, many fight about stuff like that. Why you, why, why for God's sake you bring, you don't show the photograph. Why you have to copy the photograph? People didn't understand the, the process. There's a lot of, lot of things. But you know, my father said, and I will never forget that. I never forget that. I always said, he said, if you art, will people stay and not react to good or to bad? It means you don't count. The people, I remember people fighting. I used to show with Mike Wise. They came and they fight in the gallery. One time somebody want to hit Mike and said, this is a lie. Oh this my is painted on a photograph. We don't agree. And people were coming and, and the other side and crying in front of my painting many times many times crying in front of my painting. Young artists staying, catch me in Argentina. I never forget and said, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, I walk. It's such a, give you so good feeling. Or in China and Beijing. And said, Eagle, you are Eagle Ozeri. We want to be like you. We love your wow. art. This is, this is the best that artists could hear in his life. Or when I go to Vienna, and the and the and the woman i went to my friend and the babysitter come quietly and she asked my friend this is eagle ozeri she said yes how you know she said i'm an i'm a i'm a student of art and we're learning about his art he's an amazing painter i love his work and this is make you so much great feeling or in china students laying a hundred people staying up front and waiting to photograph my painting wow. in, in Ejin or in Shanghai or in, in Japan. This is what make artists 
to feel that it tribute to the society that it was something. This is when musicians sing and people clap their hands and shout. This is what artists could get back when people buy their art or when people, when people admire their art. The admiration, it's make you feel the best in your life that you were something and you bring and you leave something after you die. That is an amazing experience. And that shows that you have the passion to educate, to teach, to be yes. part of history, to show the history and for the next artists to come figure out your secrets. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. It's just amazing to hear someone that has been doing this at a very young age and is still actively an artist. You're in, you've been an artist since you were so young. Yes. Yes. And artists, artists is a mission of life. Artists paint until he die. This is, this is what artists has to do. Artists could not retire. Every time I hear the word retired, I get crazy. Oh. I don't like when galleries <laughs> say that they're retired. I don't gallery when artists said I'm retired. Artists never retired. The art world never retired. A, a singer never retired. Artists never retired. Sculptor never retired. No matter what, artists create all the time. Even after they die, the art stay forever. And the good artists the work of painting what is the most amazing in photorealism that it's the most it's like a real life it's illusion of two-dimensional it's look like a three-dimensional and think about it it's only on canvas without dimension and with paper without dimension and it's illusion it's illusion of reality but in the end it's real it's real it's so real and this is stay beyond us and it stay after we die and it stay forever and ever. That's what I said. If you can look on Leonardo da Vinci today, after 500 years, the works on paper, if then they have to glue that on canvas and whatever, it's still alive, like he painted yesterday, or Velasquez painting. It's still fresh, like yesterday painted. That's the power of painting. Then no other media give oh, that's so powerful and this beautiful painting but you see the little strands of hair like the little static you see the reflection in the background of the glass doors it's so real i'm i'm very well known in my work because i could say one thing with the hair because most of the artists even the history they didn't paint hair because it was difficult and said second of all they don't thought it's so important and what I bring in a portrait chair is the skin tone and the hair. The hair is so real and you you need so you need a lot of attention and, and to draw with zero 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 brush it was when I do don't do the hair and I do the hair, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. So that's what I I I I tribute. Again, every artist tributes something right to, to portrait or whatever and i think with a painted how i paint hair and the light on the skin this is my my gift to the art world oh, absolutely and she has the glow and if you I mentioned feel... that that's what i i you reminds me that's what i i want to say i didn't say that before but i i pay the attention to that very much in my oh. own many, many 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 artists put attention to 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 portraiture but not to yeah. the hair well, even the painting behind you, I feel it's so real. It looks like she's standing behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could, I could paint with that you close to that, and you can see. Wow, you so see, beautiful. You can see the hair. You see? Yes, the strands of hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's it. Yes. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate you as an artist as Thank you know where you found the courage and the ambition to transition from abstract to hyper realism and then from you know women in nature to the surroundings and the yeah, chaotic yeah. beauty i i, right? I want to finish i want to finish but i want to finish by one example of one great american artist it's called philip gaston gaston philip gaston, <laughs> philip gaston was a very important abstract painter in the 60s. And one day, 
he stopped. He was with the David McKee Gallery, and he stopped to paint. And he said that sentence to his students. He was a he was a teacher, and he said, "I'm tired from abstraction. I want to tell. I want to paint a portrait. I want to tell a new story. I want to tell a story. I want to. I want to give to people a new story, a special story, and." And everybody left him. He was a famous, famous artist. They left him. They stopped to buy his art. He wow. died. Only David McKee, the gallery, helped him to survive. He died. And he was the biggest influence about all the youngest generation of uh, illustration and, and, uh, and uh, a new idea in American art, in pop art, in a lot, lot of things. So many people influenced by him. Because one day he has the freedom to stop and said, I'm tired from abstraction and I want to change. And that's opposite what most of the artists do because they start with figurative and they go to abstraction. And, and him and also myself done the opposite way. And I admire artists like that, that they feel no matter what the collector collect them, no matter people tell them, they have their freedom to choose and they have to choice to change. Like I start the conversation with you. Right. Everything is predicted, but you have the power to change. Absolutely. And your story with Gaston is very relatable. You both had the courage and you both have the freedom, right, to express yourself through art and the story that you wanted to tell or maybe a story you wanted others to see, you know, I might see one story, you might see another, right? In a painting and, or what's yeah. going on in the diner or in the subway. You the know? diner, the diner is, you're right. The diner, why I paint the diner? Because the diner was the only place, the only place in the COVID that people, black people, Japanese, Chinese, Jewish, feel equal. Diner, People feel equal. They don't need to dress special. They don't need to, to get a, a permit to go in a high restaurant with five star, with all of this bullshit. They could go there and feel good and feel equal. That's what I went to the diner and to see what's happened to all our society in the diner. And you feel safe. You feel they're safe. You put the mask, you go there, you eat, and you feel good and you feel safe. And that's why... In 20 years from now, people will look on that painting and see what's happened in that time, in right. that particular time. Right. That's what I paint that period of time. Thank you so much for your time. I just love what I do. And to meet someone like you that has the courage to stand up for what he wants to do or what you're passionate about. And that just, just insanely drives me. I did what I'm supposed to do today and you're doing what you're supposed to do and making a change at the same time because all this becomes history. So, and also I want to, I want to say something. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm lucky again, because not every artist has that. I'm lucky that I have my daughter. I have my family. Uh, I have the gallerist of mine that they are around me and they are, and they are uh, 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 pushing like Louis Maisel that, put me in so many important museums, like my daughter that fight with me and she's with the with the with the hands on the pulse what's happening today right it's you know artists that survive a lot of time there are artists that connect to the, what's happened there's artists that they they come to certain age and they disappear then they disappear i'm lucky that i have surround me a lot of great people and also a great collector that support me and with me, I I could never do that without that. And we're lucky to have you. I'm so blessed to have this time with you and speak with you, get that experience from you. It's amazing and thank you. Thank you so much.